Ukrainian armed forces struck a Russian military camp nearly 100 kilometers in the rear, far from the front lines in occupied Luhansk region, using multiple ATACMS missiles armed with cluster munitions warheads. According to the informations, Russians had more than 100 casualties in the attack. The Russian training camp and staging ground was struck by three or four ATACMS missiles. The first burst of cluster ammunition hit where the large Russian troop concentration was positioned. The third strike hit an area with several vehicles hidden in tree lines. Russian telegram channels post this video. Reportedly, this is a Russian vehicle full of ammunition burning somewhere in occupied Luhansk region. Footage from the village of Vozdvizhenka in Donetsk region near Ocheretine in the Avdivka direction. Radio Svoboda journalists witnessed intense Russian artillery fire on fields and the outskirts of a village. The front line is just a few kilometers away. The horizon is literally burning in the background, says their correspondent. Село ще Воздвиженка. Тут же фактично за лічені кілометри проходить лінія фронту. Буквально на фоні палає горизонт. Саме звідти російська армія атакує з боку Очеретіно уже намагається пройти в бік Покровська. Звісно, до Покровська ще далеко, але от бої тривають, активні, і тут лінія жвава і змінюється дуже часто. We have some good news according this information. The F-16S will operate out of underground air bases currently under construction in Ukraine. Aircraft expected to be delivered to Ukraine by the middle of June. It is really a super fun jet to fly. I'm not saying that a uh, MiG that I flew before is, is super boring, but the F-16 is definitely more agile. It easily moves. The moment you think of something, it, it turns. I felt proud, not only for myself, but only for, for, the, for the rest of the guys and that we are doing it now. I know how, how much work has been done to have the, this opportunity. It has been updated several times and as it is right here, it's a very, very modern aircraft. It's competitive with the best uh, Western fighters and uh, I'm sure that the Ukrainian Air Force will benefit from that. The biggest boost here is the motivation to go back and keep fighting with new jets.
we are in this together and we have a lot of sympathy with the, the Ukrainian people and uh, we want to do whatever we can to help. Protests against the so-called foreign agents law continue in Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia. The protests have not stopped for several evenings in a row. On April 17th, the Georgian parliament adopted in the first reading the law on transparency of foreign influence, proposed by the ruling Georgian Dream Party. It requires non-governmental organizations and media outlets that receive more than 20% of their funding from abroad to register as a foreign power organization. This law is very similar to the one that was adopted in Russia in 2012. The ruling Georgian Dream Party also came to power in 2012. It was formed in 2011. It is headed by businessman oligarch Bidzina Ivanishvili, who has close ties to Russia. Shortly before the parliamentary elections in Georgia on October 1, 2012, he got rid of most of his assets in Russia. But the British Guardian newspaper claimed that Ivanishvili owns a large stake in Gazprom. In May 2012, Ivanishvili himself assessed the Russian direction as a priority for his business. A study by Transparency International Georgia in 2022 reports that he owns at least one company in Russia through an offshore company, and in 2012 to 2019, he owned at least 10 companies in Russia. At different times, he held French and Russian citizenship, but after the elections, he regained his Georgian citizenship. Even before the elections on June 11, 2012, a Tbilisi court sentenced Ivanishvili to fines of $90 million for bribing voters. This amount was then reduced to approximately $45 million. He refused to pay the fine, as a result of which his shares in two companies were seized and a decision was made to put them up for sale. At the end of July 2012, he announced that he had paid the fine. In the parliamentary elections on October 1, 2012, the Georgian Dream Coalition, led by Ivanishvili, won a majority of votes, sending Saakashvili's party into opposition. In September 2022, the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, released a report according to which Georgia's richest oligarch has seized the state, leading to impunity for corrupt officials, Georgia's growing economic dependence on Russia, and the oligarch's secret business in Russia. After the war in 2008, Russia occupies about 20% of its territory. Since then, Russia has been increasing its influence in the country, including through Ivanishvili and his party. However, Georgians have long wanted to follow the European course, once started by President Mikhail Saakashvili, who is currently in a Georgian prison. Protests in Georgia broke out at different times, but the protests in recent days are the most widespread. The situation is heating up. Protesters against the bill on foreign agents in Tbilisi threw eggs at one of the entrances to the parliament building. The protests, which were peaceful until yesterday evening, moved to a new phase after security forces began detaining protesters. Clashes with the police began. People occupied Rustaveli Square and began to erect barricades. This is starting to resemble the events in Ukraine at Freedom Square in 2014. Let's hope that this time everything will be done with less violence and the security forces will not go so far as to open fire on citizens. But freedom always comes at a cost and you have to fight for it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.